Um, well, uh, thank you very much, for, uh, as I said, for the introduction, and also um, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, it's my pleasure to be here also in person today. Um, as Uwe just mentioned, um, my name is Mara Kusch. I'm head of office at the World Energy Council Germany. And for those of you who have listened to my speech last year, you will already be familiar with uh, what the World Energy Council is. For those of you who are new to, to the conference today, just let me give a very brief introduction. The World Energy Council Germany is a German member committee of the World Energy Council, which is the largest energy network in the world, with 80 member committees well, all over the world and representing 90% of uh, the world's energy production. And as World Energy Council Germany, we seek to bring the global perspective into the national debate. And therefore, at the beginning of this event, I would like to give a an global and international overview of the topic of hydrogen before you will deep dive into the topic of transport and uh, hydrogen in transport um, during the day. Okay. Next slide. Well, um, at the beginning of my presentation, I always like to start with two slides. One of those is, uh, yeah, is this one because as Uwe just mentioned, um, back in 2020, together with Ludwig Berko, the STEM technic, uh, we did a study on international hydrogen strategies where we analyzed which countries had already published their own hydrogen strategy or which countries had planned to do so in the near future. And this is what we found out in 2020. As you can see, only a number of countries had published their str strategies um, and most of them had done so after April 2020. And then after that, we've really seen what I like to call a boom of hydrogen strategies. And this is what you can see on the next slide, actually. Um, so basically every month, one or two governments publish their own strategy on the production and use of hydrogen. And uh, at this point, as of October 2020, we see over or almost 30 strategies by governments on hydrogen use all over the world. Although there is a certain concentration on hydrogen strategies in Europe, um, yes. Well, if go going to the next slide, um, we see that the hydrogen strategies um, are, as I said, rather concentrated in Europe. However, the the topic of hydrogen is sort of a, a global topic. You can see um, in different colors. Um, yeah, the hydrogen activities spread all over the world. In dark blue, you see the countries that had already published their national hydrogen strategy. And then um, the different colors indicate um, the level of hydrogen activity, meaning the lighter it gets, the less binding the activity is. So for example, in light blue, you see countries that are currently um, discussing initial policy um, on hydrogen or um, discussing project, um, pilot projects on hydrogen. But I think what we can clearly see is that hydrogen has become during the past two years a topic of global importance and also of global reach. And the dark blue patches continue to grow. <laughs> um, what we found is that the strategies differ in the focus and also in the measures. However, um, the main goals of the strategies are often similar, especially um, the achievement of climate targets, for example, the, the reduction of the national greenhouse gas emissions or the diversification of the energy um, sources, and last but not least, economic growth, for example, by creating jobs or by exporting hydrogen. Also, with regard to the current energy crisis, we see that governments continue to view hydrogen as an important pillar of their energy strategies because it can contribute um, well to decrease um, dependency from fossil fuels and by that raising energy security. For example, by replacing fossil fuels through hydrogen or by shifting fossil fuel hydrogen to, to, uh, to, to renewable hydrogen. So it still remains a very important topic in energy strategies. Um, with regard to target sectors, we still see that um, the industry and the transport sectors remain the main target sectors in the strategies that we analyzed. Um, especially um, the transport is one topic that is always named and as the important uh, target sector, although with a different regional focus. For example, where we see in Europe often um, that the strategies focus on the use in the, in the transport sector 
or in, in general in sectors that are hard to evade. In other countries, especially in Asia, we also see a big focus on the use in passenger cars. And apart from, or rather to say, um, while the discussion of the use of hydrogen in buildings is one which is controversially led in Europe, in other countries it looks very different. In Asia, this is also seen as one important target sector for hydrogen use, for example, um, by the use of um, hydrogen in small fuel cells. When we look at the hydrogen demand these days, um, according to uh, latest data by the International Energy Agency, the global hydrogen demand has reached around 100 million tons a year by 2021, which constitutes a 5% increase compared to 2020, and a at least slight increase from the pre-pandemic levels um, in 2019. Most of the hydrogen currently used is well, I think not surprisingly, um, derived from fossil fuels, and it is uh, used in what the IEA calls traditional applications, so um, industry, especially the chemical industry and refineries, but also the demand in new, new applications, so for example, the transport, for example, power generation is growing, and uh, most of the, the other, or the new, <laughs> The hydrogen used in new appliances is actually used in road transport. And though the, the demand is still rather low, um, it's definitely going up um, by more than 60% to be precise um, in comparison to 2020. And to, to give you a general number on the hydrogen demand in the transport sector, in 2021, it reached um, around 30,000 kilotons. Um, road vehicles are by far the most, uh, the major source of hydrogen demand and uh, most of it is consumed in trucks and buses, um, especially because of their high mileage and their weight. Then to just give you a very brief overview of the development of fuel electric cars around the world, according to the IEA, Last year, we saw a stock of uh, fuel electric vehicles of um, around 50,000 worldwide, which was a 55% increase um, compared to 2020. And if we look at the middle of two this year, uh, the numbers went up to 60,000 again, which is another 15% increase. So we see definitely a growth in this sector, especially in Korea. Um, yeah, in, in Korea, um, or Korea almost doubled the stock of fuel electric vehicles um, last year. And with regard to heavy transport, just to give you uh, yeah, some numbers, China continues to dominate the sector, with, uh, with accounting for over 85% of the world's fuel cell buses and uh, also almost 100% of fuel cell trucks. And th those are really just to give you some numbers um, that we definitely see in upward trends and although it's still, um, yeah, it's still not big, you can see that uh, going forward, um, the numbers will grow. Now, going to Germany. I think many of you are aware that the German government published its natural hydrogen strategy in um, June 2020, so I will not spend a lot of time going into the detail. Um, the main goals were decarbonization, diversification of energy sources, and uh, last but not least, the development of innovative technologies for export. And at least the medium to long term focus is on green hydrogen. At the moment, we see a hydrogen demand of around 55 terawatt hours a year in Germany. However, looking to 2030, uh, the German government expects a demand of between 90 to 110 terawatt hours. And in order to cover at least parts of this demand, especially with regard to green hydrogen, um, generation plants with a total electrolyzer capacity of up to 10 gigawatt hours are planned um, to be installed by 2030, including the necessary uh, infrastructure for onshore and offshore energy. This corresponds to around 28 terawatt hours. Um, of at least green hydrogen, which means Germany won't be able to cover the demand by itself. That is nothing new. So the German hydrogen strategy um, lays a big focus on the building of international hydrogen partnerships and hydrogen imports. And as many of you also will know, 
Germany has created a specific instrument for hydrogen imports and for the market ramp up of green hydrogen, which is called H2 Global, which has already started working a couple of months ago. What is important is uh, that Germany is planning to, um, to revise its hydrogen strategy this year. So we can expect a revision by the end of this quarter. And uh, it's also planning, the government is planning to release a hydrogen import strategy, which signals that yeah, the building of hydrogen partnerships is a very important element of, of the national hydrogen strategy. And uh, Germany is actually not the only one doing it. <laughs> so uh, if you have a look at the next slide, during the past two years, we've seen a big number of international hydrogen partnerships being formed on a global level, usually building on bilateral or sometimes trilateral agreements. And this is what you can see on the left side of the slide. So those are bilateral partnerships between governments. So those are only government partnerships. There's also a huge um, number of partnerships between companies, between um, research institutions, but those are really um, partnerships by, backed by the government. And as you can see, not surprisingly, Germany is a country with by far the most hydrogen partnerships in the world, followed by Japan and then followed by South Korea. Our colleagues uh, from the World Energy Council in May um, published, uh, yeah, I thought a rather nice map on um, expected import and export dynamics by 2040. And this is what you can see here. And there they, um, they divided the countries worldwide into five categories. I think it's a little hard to see, so I'll, I'll name it again. The, in dark blue, you can see the strongly export oriented oriented countries in, in a little bit lighter blue, the slightly export oriented, then in a very light orange, the neutral or self-sufficient countries, in a darker orange, the slightly import oriented, and then in a darker orange, the strongly export oriented. And then you can also see the demand centers, the export centers, um, which are expected at 2040 and also the trade routes. We expect to see um, the, the development of even more international hydrogen partnerships in the future because they give the opportunity to, to jointly develop technologies, to develop the hydrogen um, infrastructure and also the value chains, and in the end, hopefully, to establish trade relations. However, to establish stable trade relations, um, we see that the implementation of a clear regulatory framework is needed. And this is also a discussion being led in the European Union for quite some time. And the, this establishment includes um, safety standards, technical standards, but then of course standards for certification, because certification is a central instrument um, to prove that the hydrogen produced was green or at least um, containing low emissions. So in our opinion, um, the, yeah, the certification is one of the preconditions for international trade and in the end for the development of an international hydrogen market. And therefore, at the end of my presentation, let me give a very brief excursus into one of our studies we published at the beginning of this year. So certification is one of, I think, one of the regulatory topics also within the European Union and in the end for, for using hydrogen. Together with Dana, the German Energy Agency, we did a study on the harmonization potential of international hydrogen standards and certification, where we analyzed 11 standards worldwide, um, for example, Certify, of course, the Renewable Energy Directive, um, then also the China Hydrogen Alliance Standard and the Australian um, Zero Carbon Certification Scheme. And as time is scarce, I don't want to go into too much detail, so just let me give um, some, some observations or some conclusions we derived from this report, um, which, yeah, which are that um, the most harmonized sustainability criteria among all standards we analyzed were the use of renewable electricity as an input, then the eligibility of all carbon sources, as long as they are not deliberately produced for, for the hydrogen production, and mass balancing, which is a tracking model where the um, physical delivery of the energy carrier goes hand in hand uh, with a certificate. So, yeah, 
that's what we found. And in the end, unfortunately, we came to the conclusion that most likely we will not see a uniform certification system on a global level, mainly because uh, standards differ um, in, in some elements and there are many countries um, and uh, regions who have very ambitious criteria and they are most likely not be willing to give them up in favor of a global um, certification scheme. And one of the best examples for this is actually the European Union. Yeah, so in the end we proposed um, well, a plan concept, building on the three or more four, um, four elements you see on this slide. Um, so it's based on a direct connection between the renewable, <coughs> renewable power source and the electrolyzer on a 70% um, emission reduction compared to a fossil baseline of 94 gram CO2 per, per megajoule and the use of atmospheric carbon via direct air capture. Also, um, as tracking model mass balancing is needed. So that means if, if producers of hydrogen, um, does matter, if the producers of hydrogen produce hydrogen according to these, um, these elements, they will reach um, market access to, to the standards and markets be analyzed. Of course, this is only a planned concept, um, but yeah, this is what, what we found um, is at least feasible, although rather expensive. If you're interested in these study results, you can download them on our website free of charge. This was really just a very, very brief excursus, um, as mentioned, because certification is one of the, um, the preconditions for international hydrogen relations and partnerships. Um, yeah. With regard to the time, <laughs> to conclude my presentation now, <laughs> conclusions. Um, as you see, hydrogen remains a very important topic on the global agenda, even in the times of crisis. And uh, hydrogen production in Germany and also many other European countries will probably not be sufficient to meet the demand, and therefore imports will be needed. And therefore also hydrogen or international cooperation on the topic of hydrogen will be essential. However, as we see, there are still many barriers that exist. One is certification, but the other one are also standards. Standards in terms of safety or, or techno um, yeah, technical standards for, for hydrogen use, for example. And uh, yeah, what, what we found in the end is um, to ensure that the rather um, expensive investments into hydrogen infrastructure for production, for transport and so on, um, to ensure that they are being made now, <laughs> a clear regulatory framework is needed, and then, of course, certification is one of the essential elements. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not really sure that there's still time for question, but if not, I wish you a very successful and very interesting day, all the many, many interesting topics in the transport sector. Thank you. Th thank you so much, Myra. Uh, thank you for the extensive overview, and yes, there is time for a few questions, at least. Um, if we have some from the audience, otherwise I have um, a question that, that I would raise uh, while uh, still giving people <laughs> a minute to think uh, about issues. Mara, in, in the past when we set out uh, a couple of years back, international hydrogen trade was a concept um, and it was largely driven by the need uh, for imports and uh, by government um, initiatives uh, like in Germany by uh, the GIZ or by H2 Global. What we now see is also industrial investments and bilateral uh, arrangements between offtakers and uh, providers of green hydrogen. Nece not necessarily um, with governments involved. So is that something that you see as well? Um, could, could you say that there is a change um, in, in international relations um, in that aspect? Maybe not a change. I think uh, both, both developments are more or less in parallel. Um, as I said during my keynote also, um, we see the development of many government strategies, including also the element of international hydrogen partnerships. So that this is often mentioned in the strategy itself. But then we also see the development that countries, uh, no, no, not countries, but companies, um, 
well, they want to keep going. They, they want to get started. So they are often tired to wait for regulation. Um, so they try to move forward and um, yeah, look for partners, um, business partners in other countries and get started. So I think it's a, it's a mixture of both. Of course, um, as also mentioned, um, the costs for, for the investment into hydrogen production and into, into the necessary infrastructure are very high. Therefore, um, it makes sense, of course, to, to look for partners, but it also makes sense to see whether there's government funding. And I think, especially in the beginning, government funding is one of the essential elements to be able to take the risk of investing into the infrastructure. Um, and therefore, of course, it's, it's not a surprise, I think, that Germany is the country with the most hydrogen partnerships, as is it, it is really backed by, by money, um, which is yeah, given out by the um, H2 Global program, but not only the H2 Global one. There's also other funding um, for, for research inif initiatives, for example. So I think, yeah, it's both. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Myra. Um, any other questions from the audience at this point? If that's not the case, we're exactly on time. Thank you so much again for coming out to Berlin. Um, and uh, it's, it's too bad that I cannot be there <laughs> and only uh, see and, and meet you virtually uh, this time, but we will catch up uh, at some other point. Thank you, Myra, and uh, hopefully, uh, I don't see the audience, but hopefully there are enough to give you a big round of applause for the presentation. Thank you.